Okay. Um, Dave, do you have these in order, like speaker one, speaker two, speaker three? Is that how they're set up? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure who you well, speaker, wanted. Speaker one is Zach. I don't want to start it just yet, but... No, that's great. That's that. Okay, thank you. Okay, now let me just give you a quick little background on these presentations. Because we didn't have sample presentations, we felt would be that helpful last year. We decided to take three of my students in theater class, who had just done them in class, for, to get ready for their project. This was their dress rehearsal with me. And so that's what you're going to watch tonight. Because there are a lot of things we can point out that may be helpful to you, all right? And uh, so they're dressed in their sloppies, you know. Um, and they may not be quite the way they were. I expect I think they weren't. They, they learned from this. They went on. And I, I think they're, all their experiences from the grades they got were, were a bit better by the time they got to this evening of presentations they have to do. So the first one we're going to watch, you just put the name at the top, is Zach. On the story sheet. We have a story sheet that looks like this.
It started um, over the summer when I was playing baseball with my mentor's son. My, men my mentor's name is Bill Pucko. He is the uh, YNN sportscaster for the local Rochester News. And um, I had expressed to him how I wanted to be a sports broadcaster uh, later in my career, and he offered to uh, help me out with my senior project and be my mentor. And uh, what he did was he had me write sports articles for a local, locally run website called bylinesports.com where he takes some of the best articles from national magazines and outlets and publishes, publishes them on the website. He also takes uh, local writers called Next Waivers and publishes their articles and it consists of three college students and one high school student. So I would, um, I would write the articles for him and he would critique them and make sure everything was okay and then he would publish them on the website and people would read them. He also took me down to y and Studios in Rochester and he, it was funny because he sat me down and he had five TVs in front of him and he turned on a baseball game for each different TV and he said, okay, you watch the Yankees game, I'll watch the Mets game and the Twins game. We'll keep the Red Sox game on because I'm a fan of the Red Sox, and we'll keep the radio on for the Red Wings game. And so I had to sit there with a notepad and jot down all the stats and scores and highlights from the Yankees game, and he was busy watching two baseball games, a baseball game that he enjoyed just because he liked the Red Sox, and we were both listening for whatever was going on in the local Rochester Red Wings game. And that it was, it was nuts because there was so much going on at once and I was focused on one game and he had to do four. So it was, it was pretty crazy and really hectic and he ended up making me type out a script and record it in the sound booth and that audio and visual went on to YNN.com so I actually had one of my sports highlight reels on the news. Uh, the struggles that I faced. Um, I think the biggest struggle when I was writing the articles was definitely just thinking of something to, to write about. I'd often sit in front of the computer for hours at a time with nothing but a blank screen, absolutely nothing on the computer, just trying to think of something to write about. And I remember my mentor giving me some sound advice. He, he told me, you know, just turn on Sports Center, read a magazine, think of some hot button issue that's going on in the world of sports and then just write whatever is in your head, whether it has anything to do with sports or not, and just build off of that. And uh, I, that worked really well. You know, I would sit there, and, you know, I'd type something that I'd think of, and I'd say, okay, how can I expand on this? And this would, you know, this would lead to a pretty good-sized article. Um, the biggest struggle that I faced in the news station was, um, the time constraints because they run a show every half hour. And so when it got down to, you know, 11 o'clock where we had to put the 11 o'clock highlight reel on and all the games are ending at 10.45, I had to type up a script in less than five minutes and then record it and then send it to the editor who would then put it with the visual and cut all of it and make sure it was all ready. And then they would feed it to the news station who would then play it on the 11 o'clock news and it was you know, it was comfortable during the games when we didn't really have a lot to do, but when it got down to the end of the games and closer to the show, that's when it started getting hectic because he had to write four different articles. I had to write one, and you know, he had like no time to do it. I had a little bit of time, and so it, it was it was very hectic. But uh, somehow we got it done. It was it was really a cool experience. Um, now I'd like to show you my product. Um, first, the website. This is the website, bylinesports.com. There's my mentor. Um, the website says, bylinesports.com is a data collection of the best sports stories and columns being published nationally and regionally. And uh, if you come up here, the next waivers, there's my name right there. I'll just click on this. It'll bring up all the articles that I had, I had published while I was writing for Mr. Pucko. You see there, I, I wrote about um, which sport has the best postseason or playoff system. I wrote about Olympic hockey and why we should keep it. And 
and then Mark McGuire did his latest steroid allegations, and then Sports in the Modern Age, which was all about technology and uh, how it's affecting sports today. And, you know, this website got, got out to a lot of people because he linked it to Twitter and to different news sites, and so we got, you know, I got a lot of people reading my articles, which was very cool. Um, and then this was what I did at the news station. These were the actual notes that I used while I was taking the game. And you see they're very messy <laughs> and just quick notes to try and keep up with the pace of the game. Very simple things like Burnett overthrows on a sack bunt, the run scores, Baltimore won, New York nothing. And then this was the actual script that I ended up writing within that 15 minutes from the game to the end to the beginning of the show. And I'd actually like to read that for you right now. Baltimore tries to turn around their 3-11 record on the road. They played their second of three against the Yankees. But that's easier said than done when you're playing in New York. Francisco Cervelli was all over the field as he started off the game with a triple in the second inning. Romero Pena drove him in and tied the game at one. In the third, Cervelli made a tough play on a pop-up that took him over the dugout fence. In the fifth, Brian Pitt, Baltimore pitcher Brian Matisse overthrew Brian Roberts on a sack bunt. That produced a run in the Yankees' own a 2-1 lead. A.J. Burnett went seven and a third with eight Ks to pick up his fourth win of the season. And that was actually Mr. Punko who ended up recording that and putting that on the news. So that was very cool. My own article, my own words on national television, not national, regional television. It was very cool. I'm very proud of that. Um, the best thing that I think I took out of this project was getting my, my stuff out there. I got a lot of college credibility out there. Um, you know, people have read my articles. They've told me their opinion. I, I think that's a cool experience to just have people agree or disagree with your thoughts and know that somebody out there does care about what you're writing. I think that's a very cool experience. It also uh, it prepared me for what I will need if I pursue this profession, the craziness, all the you know, all the perks and everything. So I, I think I took a lot out of this project in preparing myself for my future. Thank you. Thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get much practice time to before you read that, you read that last uh, sports announcement, right? Yes. Uh, did you have just a few minutes the way you had to write it up at the end of the, <laughs> the game, or did you have a long time to practice that? Or no, I didn't because um, he, like I said, it was a, it was really coming down to the wire towards the end of it. And what he did, he actually didn't tell me that I was going to be recording it. So what he did, he printed it out and literally shoved me in the sound booth and said, "Okay, go at it." And I had to do a cold reading. And granted, they were my own words, but it was still cold reading, and it was, you know, it took me a couple takes, but I finally got it down, and I, you know, he's amazing because he can do it in one take, and, it, you know, they're cold readings, and he does it in seconds, and it's, it's really amazing. Yeah. 